Hello and welcome to the Benjamin Zulu Show. And today we start the show off with a question. This lady says she's 27 years old and she's been dating this guy who drinks so much. And this guy is so broke that he's even borrowing her 20 shillings. Uh, but she's afraid that if she leaves him, she may not get another person. And then this leads us to the conversation that we're having today. And that is about dating in a crisis you know, finding yourself in a situation where you are with someone who really is highly dependent on you and you think that if you do not, if you do not let them be, then they will not be, or rather if you step away from that, then they might not get any other help or they highly, highly need you. And that is what we're talking about today, Zulu. <laughs> you know, um, there's some glaring situations that no more people can see. Yeah. You're getting a bad deal. Yes. But you, you are stuck there and you have your own reasoning. Yes. And what people cannot see and because they, many people go on to marry, even when everything is, when if everybody is disapproving and you say they are envious, they don't understand, they are not patient, they don't know wh what I can see, they can see the potential of this person. They, the problem with Kali, we stay with people who, are, who, we, who don't deserve us. It's not because we are so compassionate, merciful about them. Let's stop sanitizing this okay in the past we have said there are cases where people stay because they're too merciful about the one they're staying with mm -hmm. and that they care and they really committed to give their all until this person can come up mm -hmm. and live a, a good if, life if i go there with the zulu analogy i need to think about myself there are books that i've written about thinking about myself then you know what happens i look like the bad person you are very selfish. Don't judge a man on the day he is today. <laughs> they say all these things to us. And you know, people can tell me I have we have come very far with this person. When we met, they were not ending. Now they are something. I know we are on a journey and we'll get there. Yes. Makes <laughs> a lot of sense. For the last two years, this person was there, now they are here. Mm. They could not get out of the house. Mm. Now, I not only help them get out of the house, mm. they actually have a job. Uh, you see, there's hope. There is proof that mm. actually we are moving. He gambles once in a while. <laughs> <but> <laughs> he has a job now. You know, <laughs> and I've seen men who feel very validated by a girl they managed to put together. Yes. Was crashing, was depressed, broken, and was who, who was just in a bad place. And because of his patience and help they, she managed mm -hmm. now she's somewhere yeah. and she's put together and she's polished now she's managing yes. she has episodes mm -hmm. and the man is convinced it's better to marry because now she adores you yeah. you are everything men being adored is very tempting <laughs> be careful <laughs> as a man avoid a girl who only adores you and cannot challenge you think with you connect mm. with you push you as well you're the one pushing her she cannot push you yes she cannot stretch you she can't challenge your ideas because for men that is always a litmus test when they hear them starting five kilometers away mm -hmm. i usually rush forward to present <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to bust the balloon and shorten the, oh. the story. With, with the men, you can afford to be in straight lines. Yes. With women, you have to learn slowly. Uh, you have to wait for me. I have to tell you. You, you know. Until she pours that out, she can't hear anything. <laughs> How do you know that? Experience. It's so true. Oh, my God. I hope you, like, it has to come out somehow. You know. Whether you listen, you don't listen, it has to. <laughs> So, yes. with men, because they're looking, where am I getting it wrong? Men are supposed to get aim. Women are trying to afloat. A guy is trying to aim. <laughs> so, instead of trying to, I just hold his hand now, release. No, I got it. What was wrong? Ah. You're aiming in the wrong direction. Yes. The whole target is over here, man. So, usually rush forward, if it's a guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does not mean men don't need venting, but they usually release quickly when they have gotten the right target mm. this ah the other things now they'll unravel quickly mm. so I usually rush forward to ask him can that woman engage you on your level can she challenge your ideas dream with you she, can she stretch you does she challenge your thinking 
No, but most likely the connection is very emotional and very worshipful. She holds you so highly that you feel elevated by the way she looks up to you. That's a thing that most many men need, we all need to function. But should get it from the same person who can also correct you. Okay. <laughs> who can engage you in your level one, challenge your ideas. And th there are some men who married a woman who had capacity, but he did not have the wisdom to, in to include. Pilate was a dictator who had that wisdom to engage his wife in his decisions. And he was saved from an eternal mystic. Yes. Because of that wisdom. We don't know the wife's name. We just know that she is the wife of. Yes. Sometimes our women don't want the credit. They just want to be there to back you up and help you. Is to say that situation where people have been attracted to the one they're dating because the one they're dating has a problem that have helped them solve so far and they're so grateful and I think with this we can go very far. We have discussed it in another show. It's called What's Wrong With Dating A Person Who Is In A Crisis. Yeah. Somebody can go to it. Today we are taking the other direction mm -hmm. which is common but not discussed because mm -hmm. it's uncomfortable. That the problem why people date a person who is below them, who is in a crisis, who, can't, who is borrowing you 20 shillings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know 20 shillings like it's with the economy now you know 20 shillings is no you can't withdraw that in an impressor you need <laughs> some threshold if you <laughs> it's like for a cigarette you know, maybe just one t t t t t number. i'm sending oh, you the number to pay i pick the the you know the problem is you who is dating them you are in a personal crisis of your own you're in an identity crisis of your own. You're in a, in a bad place. In fact, this is the reason why people have just come from a heartbreak date. Horrible. That, that other first case was merciful and compassionate. Although it was a mystic, this person will never take you where you're going. It's a person you've rescued and put up. And that was mentorship. Mentorship have expiry dates. Remember that. Mentorship and rescue operations have expiry dates. They usually wear out. The tension, the gradient of flow, flow that was going on, the master, uh, the master student, the teacher, pupil, the, the helper and the helped wears out because the one who is help, being helped gets tired of that position. At some point they want to feel like they, mm. are on, they it's their life, they're not just being carried, they're not just being helped. And sometimes it, we, and we, they want their freedom. Yeah. They rebel like teenagers rebel. Yeah. <laughs> Try to look for their freedom. Yeah. So if you marry that person, they will rebel at some point. Ask anybody, those men, especially who marry those kind of girls. She becomes extremely rebellious after some years. She starts going out there as if she's out to just hurt or that doesn't care. The end of mentorship. I did a whole post three years back and I reposted it recently. It was, called, it was called The End of Mentorship. What marks the yeah. conclusion? Mentorship relationship don't have to end. If you mentor me until I can become a colleague, professional, if you're mature enough for us to continue the exchange and you, you allow my input and give me my full respect as a practitioner in the, in the field you helped me come up in, our potential becomes infinite. But, but there are mentorship relationships, the ones that involve romance, feelings, mm. that must end. Because the person gets tired of being in a small space and they feel entitled. Just human nature. It's human instinct. Don't fight for it. Don't fight for it. Don't say this person is nice. This yeah. is human psychology. Some things about humans are consistent and constant. <laughs> Forget those people tell you there's no formula to life. There may be no formula to life. But human beings have psychology that is consistent that allows us to study it. The, because animals have consistency, we can tame them. Because yes. human beings have consistency. We are not saying they are copied paste. We mm. are saying they are things that are consistent with them. That part of our, one of those consistencies, at some point, everybody wants to feel like they are managing their own life. Okay. They are not being carried by somebody. Yes. So this other case then, of where you are the one who is in a bad place, and you are not yourself, and you are not conscious of it, or you are in denial of it, or you underestimate it, that you're in a bad place yourself. You are feeling low and gloomy and in a dark place and down. And you're not in your best spirit. You're not in your right mood. And you're vaguely aware of it. Yeah. But when you find romance, it, it exhilarates you. You feel like you know, you're appreciated, you're validated. It gives you a deceptive sense of validation and strength. And you want to keep that connection going on to continue giving you this kind of relief. Yeah. <laughs> Be very careful. Be very careful. There's something that happens when, when you're in a bad place. You always know subconsciously it will take a journey to climb out. It will take a journey. Yeah. When you're in a dark place, the solution is to heal, to forgive,
to recover, to remind yourself who you are, to build your skills again, to regain your root, to it's to do those small things that brings you back to your pace. Life has pace, everybody has rhythm. There's something I asked you about what you think it means in, in, in Genesis 18, 10 and 14. It says, I will return to you next year according to times of life. Mm -hmm. And Sarah will have a baby. And those times of life baffled me. Many people gloss over it. Mm -hmm. Thinking he is referring maybe to the monthly seasons. But he's talking yeah. about next year. And Sarah was no longer having those anyway. She was already past that. Yes. And it cannot be a year from now because usually pregnant nine months. So it's yes. what is it about the time of life? I'll visit you according to times of life. You are God. Why would times of life matter to you? Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. God himself talking and he's, he mentions a few things there. <laughs> wow. The times of life was referring to, many scholars have called them the cycles. They had been referred to in Genesis 8 to the same book that as yeah. long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, winter and summer, day and night, summer, spring shall not cease. He was saying there shall be cycles for as long as the earth exists. There are cycles that apply to every person. Those who have studied them have estimated a figure four years to seven years. Many people have a same feeling after every four years. A same kind of occurrences and happens after every five years. They can recall when they were in Form 1, they had this nudging to do something, start some practice in their personal life, change yeah. something in their life, do something. And then they procrastinated because it was inconvenient to do what they were feeling, and it went away. Then later on, that year, in verse, exactly five years later, the same feeling, mm. <laughs> same experiences, yeah. same good luck or bad luck or good happiness or bad happiness. Or you feel deja vu. I've been here before. <laughs> you yeah. know? And it's all personal. You can't explain it to people, but you wish somebody can give it a name. <laughs> because you're having similar experiences. Yes. <laughs> so sometimes while you're in a down place, you know very well, it's a repetition of a cycle. You know it was here before. And you know what you're supposed to do? You keep putting it off because it requires work. To swallow your pride, swallow your ego, deal with your anger, deal with your impatience, acquire the skills, be more self, start learning, start reading, start accepting correction, correct your mindset, correct your attitude. Sometimes the psycho is calling you up and the climb is uncomfortable. That's yeah. why we resist it. Yeah. Let me tell you, when he said, my spirit shall not always contend with the souls of men. There's something men that always been trying to decode it and see what he meant. Mm -hmm. That time he was tired with the people and he swept them away. But he spared one man and we were lucky to be here again. Yes. <laughs> and uh, it was a flood he used the time. And he said, shall not always. I think sometimes he's coming in periodic times to give you time. He's also tiresome to stay there with you. And <laughs> you're so reluctant and <laughs> unwilling. <laughs> so, yeah. you know very well you're being invited to something. Last time you were invited, that way you also escaped. Mm. into partying, mm. into a relationship. Mm. Mm. You, you silenced it. Yes. And after a period, it is stopped. Now you realize you no longer have the, the energy. You try to do the same thing that was easy that time. Yeah. You, imagine that mood can come on you and you consume a book very quickly. Purchase a book very quickly. You have a lot of favor. You call up, people assist you. you you attempt doors open as if they were just waiting for you to push slightly. If that thing passes, the same doors would require a hacksaw. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Most people can relate to that kind mm. of experience. Mm. The mm. same people who are already I'll always be there. Call me anytime. You call his uh, now they are unreachable. Now they are not available. Now that season of softness and at some kind of environment of enab enabling is also accompanied with a crisis to make you take action. Because human beings are very stubborn, we respond to pain. So we are sent a crisis, a period of pain and stuckness, rock bottom, to force yeah. us to act. That is true. That is so true. We are so stubborn. Extremely. <laughs> Extremely. <laughs> Extremely. We want to stay on our routines and things. Yeah, you know. yeah. I know it's not going anywhere, but you this, know, this a is a simple okay. thing like moving houses. Yeah. <laughs> we know we are due to move from this house. <laughs> But no, the inconvenience of extra budget, <laughs> having to look for that another house, and yeah, and yeah. you know in your head I'm supposed to move on, I'm supposed to move on yes. until the burglary happens, and it draws you back mm. 
Mm. And now people are blaming the thieves, but you are seated there with full of a lot of guilt. Full because of guilt. Because you knew you were supposed to. <laughs> yeah. The fire happens. Yes. <laughs> Something yes. happens. L yes. For the last two months, I felt I should move. And <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> you know? Because um, tomorrow then, hey, next week. I like, uh, you know, even movers are so expensive. <laughs> I'm just trying to find the right one. <laughs> Imagine. Something I'm telling you, buy a land, yeah. purchase that car, change jobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And you remember last time it was nudging you to change your direction of life. Those decisions that change the direction of your life always involve inconvenience, more money. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. In, 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 in divine masses, they, you are pushed to a to, to, to corner to force you to change. <laughs> Ruth was meant to migrate with Naomi, but yeah. she was not going to do it when the husbands are well and alive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the preordination she was born elsewhere and her destiny was elsewhere. But the crisis of men dying and men, they, there's farming, they're stranded. God doesn't need that crisis if you can be obedient to voices, to nudging. Yeah. That thing, if you learn to respond to it. Part of my, my exercise, the gym I'm doing now, the internal gym, is yeah. to obey voices that I don't need to be accompanied with whips. That whips of crisis and losses and rock bottom and pain. Mm. Some people have to fall sick and be confined to a bed. So now they can obey. <laughs> the possibility of death is here. <laughs> <laughs> and I should have done something about it a long so time ago. So now they stop the drinking. Yes. But they knew they should stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, the, uh, one lady was saying, this is friend who is married and we've been in a talking. Sometimes go on lunch. Now on Father's Day, I wish him Father's Day. He said, I wish to have Father one child with you. Now the wife saw the chatting and now mm -hmm. she's insulting me all around. <laughs> My daughter, forget insulting. <laughs> She might show up at your work and just rough you mm. up. Mm. And this is because of insecurity. You think flirting with a married man about getting a child with a kid ah, is a simple thing. Ah, my friends. You, okay, I don't know. Learn <laughs> to stay away from married people. Yes. From, you can have friends from all, whether married or not married, but the boundaries. So that anybody seeing the chat, there's no reason to be accused. Mm. Talking about getting a child, that's not normal. Mm. I, and I told her, you see, you're joking and crossing borders here and there until you know you're supposed to stop that. Continue with it. Until one day you are given marks, permanent reminders on your face, maybe. <laughs> on embarrassment, you trend online. Yeah. <laughs> Those, if she screenshot them with your name and splash them around, what next? <laughs> you know? Yes. What next? Yeah. And when you find yourself having to change contact and like, 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 <laughs> you know, there's a guy who, was, who posted a pornographic uh, picture accidentally. Oh. On a group chat. Oh goodness! <laughs> it was a little brother Ochola in a church. Oh group. yeah, Ochola. Oh no 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 no. Ochola became famous. <laughs> it became a whole tagline. <laughs> hey, you brother Ochola. Recently, there's also Baba Gloria. <laughs> yes, there's Baba Gloria as well. Oh. <laughs> so maybe some, something I've been telling them: stop this pornographic thing. Yes. Stop it. Yes. Stop it. <laughs> Now, will B Brother Chola change the name? He has to do something about it. So will Baba Gloria. <laughs> so if you, don't, if, if you don't hear, something will have to be done. So then what will happen then? Um, why when you're in a personal crisis, the solution is painful, but it is mandatory. Just remember that, my colleague. That will okay. save you. You don't always have a leeway, a choice. In fact, is it one person who Peter was ang uh, the people ran away? Mm -hmm. And our Lord asked them, do you just want to go? He said, where do we go? Only you have the word. If you learn you have no choice, Muikali, when you, when you feel the nudging yeah. to change jobs, it's not a choice. You're just being told softly, out of friendship. The situation is more dire. You don't want to wait and prove and confirm it. When your friend tells you they danger ahead, you don't say, ah, let me go meet it, I see how it happens. You trust them, you change direction. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so the, the one thing is to remember that it's not always a negotiation, an invitation to think about it. Mm -mm. Sometimes it involves danger. The person you are dealing with, the reason you are accommodating them because you're in a ba dark place, you're in a hole, you're supposed to climb out. But you found another person in a hole. That lady, I told them that, I told her that this man has a crisis of addiction and you have mm -hmm. a crisis of identity yourself. Both of you are in a hole. You're comforting each other in a hole when you know you're supposed to climb out. You don't belong here. Yeah. There's another time I told you about a deep that mm -hmm. 
graduates go through after coming from yes. college before they were in a settled community yes. with routines, yes. lifestyle that yes. kept them afloat, learning, mm. going, growing in step. I mean, with friends, we, with social networks that kept them in sync, then you are dispersed suddenly. And you don't have another community elsewhere. You don't go back home, even when you go back, that, that, you don't relate with your siblings the same way you relate with these kind of friends. No. The environment here is dissolved. And many of them don't register that something drastic has changed. They don't have a permanent membership to any church community or friends mm. or mm. people who know like who can that we call it that checking of your friend. How is it? How are you doing? Those things of where are you with this? Where are you with this? You may underestimate them until nobody is checking on them and yes. actually you slow down with life. That is true. You slow down. You need friends who you know that girl tomorrow will harass me over this. Let mm. me do it. <laughs> <laughs> That is true. There are things you do because you know uh, Carol will not listen to that. Mm -hmm. She will not even talk to uh, Don't talk to me, my friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is true. Yeah. <laughs> I witnessed two, two friends cornering each other. Hey, don't, without that title, did don't talk to me. He was pushing him to purchase a particular piece of land. <laughs> and he knew this guy would procrastinate and another person would buy it. Yes. He was the one occupying it. He was renting. And then the landlord was selling. I told him, buy where you are renting. Yes. <laughs> it's a good property. Yes. So the guy was dragging his feet about it. You know, ah, no, that money I use the other place. Now, from today, we are not talking. <laughs> <laughs> the only way we are talking is if I see a title. Yes. <laughs> yes. Ah. So that I become with the photos. <laughs> 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 that he went to the lands, he made deposits. The title deed is not out, but, but I made. made. So that time now there was a penis put him, you know, give it now. They are tossing. I said, look at how friends can push you forward. The right friends. Yeah. So that deep comes when you have been detached. Even if you are untouched through phone, what you are doing with your life now is yes. not visibly close to them. Yeah. Remember that this invitation is for a friendship basis. You are being nudged slowly to be saved from the pain. Why you are connecting with the wrong people when you are in a wrong season in your life mm -hmm. is because they are bringing a feeling from a shortcut point of view. Comradeship and suffering of pain and company in a hole when you are supposed, to, you know, you don't belong here. Yeah. You're supposed to come out. That is also supposed to remind yourself. The yeah. second reason is because the cycles we referred to usually are trying to take you to where you belong. Okay. Your path, let me repeat this, your path in life, nobody has seen it. Nobody has trodden the path Mwikali is treading. That's true. Nobody can advise Mwikali with exactitude about where she's going. Because nobody has trodden that path. Mm. People have gone to school like you, they have gone to TVs like you, they have done shows like you. But the particular thing you are carrying out, yep. Only you and the one who sent you mm. will show it to us. My manufacturer. <laughs> non, the rest of us can only spectate and tell you the general principles about life. Yeah. What we are discussing here in general principles. Mm. But the particular path of what you are here to do, nobody knows it. <laughs> so that voice is the only, that feeling is the, is the compass arrow that is trying to show you where you belong. When we are at harbor, harbor is like class. When ships are in harbor, when they are at the coast before they start moving, they are clustered yeah. together. Yes. You can't tell much difference. Mm. But people are boarding differently depending on where it has promised it's going. Yeah. According to the map. When we are at the airport, we look like we are all together. Mm. But at the, the, the craft take off, they usually change direction, go this way, go where they are going. Mm. When the ships, when the ship leave Harbour, you see them, even if it was 52.3 north, the other one 53.2 north. Mm. With the time, it becomes a yawning difference. You and your classmates started together. But as time yes. goes, it's a yawning difference. You and your workmates, you, you start together at some point. With the time, mm. remember that. The reason I don't want you to stay with your girl group and boy group, so loyal that you don't want to do that, what the voice is saying, and it will separate you with the boy, because they're not buying land now. But you, you're feeling, you're feeling move to Kisumu. Yeah. Move to Kisumu. And yeah. every day you, somebody talks about Kisumu. Different voices talking about the goodness of Kisumu. <laughs> when that season comes, when the cycle arrives, you hear many voices that they don't even know you, but they're saying the same message. And you know they could not have planned because they don't even know you're listening. It's a radio. <laughs> <laughs> All doubt is removed yes. as to whether this message is yours. Yes. It's radio. It's somebody preaching some place. A church. We are so many and it is so, so targeted <laughs> at you. And where did this fellow see my situation? <laughs> And, and you're listening with an angle. Yeah. <laughs> this is too creepy yeah. now. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> you know, you open social media innocently. <laughs> the post. <It's> so <laughs> and, and you make jokes about it. You're just like, I looks like, eh? But then you're not doing anything about it. Very good.
So it's, it, it, it's the inertia of unplugging from what we're okay. used to. Okay. And that's where the crisis is sent to kick you out. Mm. If he is merciful, he will make the sea to become stormy until the, 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 the captains have to ask you, what did you do? Can yeah. everybody pray to their God? Yeah. If there was no storm, jo Jonah would have continued. <laughs> Sometimes he is still contending with you and sends storms until you are thrown into the sea. A crisis to cause you to obey what you would have obeyed by just instructions. <laughs> Yeah. So the second thing is to remember there's a unique part of your life that nobody else knows. Except that voice you are disobeying and the deep, the crisis of loneliness, the mm -hmm. crisis of being dejected. Christ, my relationships never work. Sometimes they never work because it's the wrong direction. They, 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 they never work because you are touching to places you don't belong. Yeah. They never work out of mercy. It's actually mercy to keep you from going the wrong direction. And if you were to be left alone, you would self-destruct. At another time in Men's Day, I was telling men that the greatest enemy of great men is themselves. It's not the women oh. in their lives. Mm -mm. Oh. <laughs> Spill the beans. <laughs> Please do tell. Men of greatness. Those men who, who bring mighty changes on earth. Those who impress athletically. Yeah. Those whose career fly off. Those mm. whose jobs fly off. Who's, they have so big heart for the needy. Those who invent things like Mpesa that are just generational change. Yes. Money system. Invent something. And some men don't invent. They change their particular family. Remember back home yes. and you find a person you respect so much. Although me, I don't know them. Nobody else knows them. But mm. from where you know, where they picked that family mm. to where they have brought it, you salute that man. And yeah. he could just be a, a primary school teacher. But his consistency with his bicycle to take kids through university. Yeah. <laughs> To, yeah. to take care of his even brothers and sisters mm. and lifted the whole family without being clapped for. Everybody who knows that family salutes that man. Absolutely. So there are men like that. He's a great man. You know very well. You, you know. Mm. He, all these lives were pegged on that man. Please yeah. respect that man. There's a Nazareth school teacher who touched so many lives and mothered kids from crying, being disorganized, shattered around, put them together. And today those people, they credit that nameless teacher back yeah. in the village <laughs> which the world does not know mm. uh, you know mother's day or father's day you see people posting people you don't know you have not seen anywhere yes this is my hero the one who's the, Mikali is saying this is my hero we know Mikali is the hero but she has a hero we don't know somewhere <laughs> so some of those men who have that influence they carry their own seeds for self-destruction samson's enemy was not delilah delilah has been over blamed and she played her cards openly she was not even tricky <laughs> She said, I'm trying to call enemies to kill you. She repeated it. Yes. And the guy played along. Yeah. Please, before you overblame. And I'm not saying she's a good woman or anything. I'm just saying she did not hide what she was trying to do. The no, guy had a chance to stop the game. Yes. <laughs> but he didn't. <laughs> the self-destructive urge of Samson's of this world, David's of this world, is what brings them down. Every other thing is opportunistic. Delilah was just opportunistic. Bathsheba opportunistic. Yeah. It is the inconsistency of the great person that takes them down. Samson had a low moment, feeling dejected because the first woman was taken away. Feeling dejected because he's a governor with a position of money but no wife. Feeling that he has to prove that he's also money now. He, has, he had issues inside that he could have sorted with therapy or life coach or whoever and bring back himself and confidence and know that dating is as such like anything else. And one rejection doesn't mean failure. I've also purchased properties. I had tried five before I landed on the right one. But just it's the same way making decision trying this it, it doesn't mean i'm a failure no. he could have healed to that level but he didn't self-destruction comes from when you don't organize what is wrong within you until outsiders take advantage of it if you're finding yourself hooking up with people who are in a crisis themselves they can't help you you are carrying a self-destructive streak heal before you try to expose yourself and you know what always avoid dating when you're feeling down and worthless because you end up in relationships that reflect that feeling and that is just mind-blowing it's like going to the car market when you're feeling broke you'll gravitate to those who are selling rejects and when you find one who is giving you any attention you cling on to them what gives you confidence when you walk into the bazaar is the value that you carry 
if you have a problem with the value or the amount of money you have you must stay away until you've accrued enough of it to afford yourself a decent car or else you'll end up with a worthless deal or a worthless union so avoid contracting relationship based on fear of ending up alone rather than one inspired faith about your future and what it is that you deserve. Mm -hmm.